back to another episode of Real Talk. I'm your host, Steph. And today I have the honor of, have, of having An Ting Chang with us. She's not only a concert pianist, um, she's a theater director, um, but also the artistic director of Kakilang, which is previously known as Chinese Arts Now. So before we start, can you just tell us a little more about yourself? Okay, so as you introduced, kind of like I'm a pianist and composer and theater, and I currently run like um, um, Kakilan, which produce and presents the works which is created by the East and Southeast Asian heritage artists. So like um, what I am part um yeah, maybe I start longer time before, kind of like I, I come here like uh, 13 years ago, like from, I'm originally from Taiwan and I come here for like uh, 13 years and then I'm always like uh, making music and making theater. Um, So my particular interest in arts, arts making is like, um, I like to bring people from different like background in terms of like artistic backgrounds together and to create some work which is like a quite unique and, and from different aspects. And I also feel there's too little stories about the East and Southeast Asian in the UK or just abroad and people in general have a very, very shallow um concept about East and South Asian people here in the UK and also in a lot of like a, a lot of like countries like in the world. So I just feel that very important to tell the stories about more of like a, a diverse range of like a people and just like particularly on East and South Asian. And then, then I bring kind of like a, in recent years, I bring technology together with uh, music and theater and I want to create a different kind of like a works which kind of like use the, the up-to-date kind of like technology and bring people a new kind of like world to see um, to see like a story differently from a perspective which combines arts and technology. Amazing. And obviously, um, like Kaki Lang was formerly known as Chinese Arts Now. What was the motivation behind the rebrand? Yes, I think kind of like a, I mean, originally, I mean, also like a Chinese heritage, there's a lot of Chinese heritage, even just want to tell stories about people who are based here and having Chinese heritage. And it's just a lot, a lot of people. So it's just like in the, at the beginning, kind of like we really want to push the idea of like a Chinese is not just what people think about Chinese, but Chinese it's got all the different thinking about Chinese. It's kind of like a, you can be, Chinese or not Chinese, but you can tell a story related to Chinese and it's got all the different range. Just like I'm Taiwan, I'm from Taiwan. I would never call myself Chinese in a way, but I have like some Chinese cultural background. So, and I want to allow people to know there is this different aspect of like a Chinese background, which mm. is not just like the stereotypical kind of like the Chinese. But then after a few years, it's become like a really hard because people always still are confused about, oh, are you from China or do you have funding from China to do things? Or just like, what's the relationship with like China government or something? And also there are people who are kind of like get half Chinese heritage or kind of like get a little bit of like a contact and just like doubting about whether this is just, just it's very, very difficult to define. Mm -hmm. So I think just like a, to change, to rebrand from Chinese arts now to Kakila, it's a, it's a, it's a trend of the time. And also the necessary time for now because it's just too confusing for people, and also make it the the title when when the brand is actually quite specific and it's actually become more inclusive. And when it's very broad in Chinese, it's actually less inclusive because people are not sure about whether this they belong to this general term. But when we become Kakilan, even Kakilan. A lot of people don't know what it means, but people still feel, oh, because I don't know about it or because I know that. So it might be something to do with me. So it's a, it's a very interesting psychology for people. <laughs> yeah, and uh, one particular thing I'm very happy about Kakilan is it's, um, it's, it's a Chinese dialect, Hokkien. And Hokkien is actually in different parts of China, people all speak in different dialects. Mandarin, just like one part, like kind of because of the political situation where this is chosen, everybody speak Mandarin, but actually people from different parts of China, they all speak different language. And Hokkien is originally from the South China, like one area where like the people speak. And then these kind of like Hokkien speakers actually, they become one of the major language for these diasporic Chinese. 
So a lot of like people, Cantonese is the biggest one, but Hokkien is the second biggest one for diasporic like Chinese. So in UK, a lot of like Chinese immigrants, they speak Hokkien. And then in Malaysia, like in Singapore, even in Hong Kong, and then Taiwan is like one of the official language in Taiwan as well. So it's actually a really known language, but most people who are not familiar with like the uh, Chinese culture. Or very interestingly, even a lot of Chinese people in China, they don't know this language because like China is too big. I think it's yeah. more popular for diasporic Chinese people. And we all know because it's an immigrant language. So it's like really good to be this like dialect. But the, the, and the other thing which is really good is like the, the meaning of it. It means all of us and we can define whatever we think this is all of us. And then we can say this is like a um, family, or do we mean East and Southeast Asian, or do we mean Chinese, or do we mean artist, or do we mean audience? But so it's actually very easy to define who is like our kakilan. So it's like a, of us. So like, and then we, our definition is like whoever wants to get involved and be interested in our the thing we are making or make with us, and they are our kakilan. They are one of us. So this is very handy, and that this is a very particular expression and meaning from the from Chinese language as Hokkien. So yeah, so I'm very happy about this name. Yeah, I honestly, I, I love the meaning of the name and where it came from. And the fact that you mentioned how you're trying to make, you know, change Chinese arts now to a more inclusive kind of organization. So the name just makes a lot of sense, especially how a lot of different uh, people from different like Asian countries also kind of speak it in some way. Um, yeah, so I think I think that's really cool. So obviously, um, part of Kakilang, there's like one of the main things is the Kakilang Festival. Um, and in 2023, it'll be starting soon on the 21st of February. And obviously it's packed with like different events, like theater shows, live music, um, digi digital experiences, and even exhibitions. Um, What's the theme behind this year's festival? And if there's a meaning behind it, what's the meaning behind the theme? Yeah, I think like what I mean, one one main thing kind of like it's a broader thing is like a, it's a Southeast Asian heritage. And so kind of like we can see diverse, a diverse range of the Eastern Southeast Asian like a perspectives in the festival but the other one which is more specific for this festival is like a, we want to actually actually kind of like go passing east and southeast asian this kind of like border and then to say there's actually we are one of the individuals on the earth and a lot of like our program actually say about this so kind of like starting from home ex so like how home ex like we are exploring about the subject of home relate to different people so we have a kind of like a sci-fi story kind of like as a main story back like a background where just a like home act is a metaverse land and then it's happening like 50 years after like now and the, the earth is about to crash it's very very bad status maybe it's kind of like a, probably we can imagine <laughs> so in 50 years time it's really bad and then the people there are two human beings they are the two dancers and they go into this metaverse because they found this is actually compatible for human beings so they go there to build home to explore about how to build home in this metaverse and but during this journey we also hear a lot of like testimony from many ghosts human being ghosts like uh, and that's an interview like i interview like 30 people they are all from different background they are majority of like eastern southeast asian but they are also not like a non-eastern southeast asian because home is such a broad to topic so then, then sorry say so many things and then just like one thing i want to achieve is there's like one participant like she ended kind of like this story kind of like she said we are all migrant of the earth and mm -hmm. i feel kind of like really touched by hearing about like that we are all migrant of the earth it's actually we are one of the migrant of the earth here and then we kind of like when we say oh we are asian we are east asian and you are like from different background it's all just a little bit nonsense especially in the world nowadays we just like try to say so much about this so i think it's important to bring out the expression but it's also important to recognize we are one of the individuals in the like in the earth so then let's go into our exhibition is called stateless 
So, and we exhibit like uh, 10 artists from the UK and also Eastern South Asian, including like um, um, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Singapore, and then also China and artists based in Japan. And so, and there are also artists like based in UK and they all have like Chinese heritage. So, and then, but this is, I mean, this, the border of all of these countries is always like a, a very controversial like point. But then this one, we, the name title of this exhibition is Stateless. We are seeing the artists, their perspectives of like their experience of them with the physical states of where they are. And this kind of like a thing is actually universal. And it's kind of like, it's like, it's go beyond the border. So it's, a, it's in a way kind of like there is like the state kind of we know these artists are from different place, but the, the feeling expression of the artist is actually stateless. It's, it's beyond the border of the thing. Yeah, and then we also have like a very exciting, like a, a queer cabaret taste. So like where we gather 10 queer artists, like they are all from East and Southeast Asian background, but this is really kind of an event where everybody just come and dance together, no matter where you are from. And so kind of, but we want to platform all of these amazing kind of like a queer art and then it's just just amazing if you see like a photo or something visually they're they just amazing and then they also they have amazing like a um, music talent and then it's just going to be a very very fun party and and then it's kind of and we also have other gigs and then we also have like um dance and then we yeah so the other like joe phone's performance is uh, the rest of our life she is and uh, she worked work with uh, like her collaborator George Orange, so it's called the rest of our life. And they are both like uh, dancers of their fifties, and they are kind of like explore about dancers of their fifties, which is not easy because like we normally see kind of like, how dancers is like it's like when they are younger and the dancers after when they are fifties. What what is kind of like the feeling they have at that time, and they are they are just like a genius in this perform in this show. They have a lot of audience in engagement and then they also they were just like playing about the chairs and then I, I saw this show and I was just like I, I just don't know why I just cried when they were just like playing the chairs in between each other it's just like they, they are using their life experience and things and to put that in the chairs I have no idea what, what they made it really I, I saw the show but I cried and I didn't know why I cried by that but it's just yeah but I mean it's, it's amazing and at the end everybody danced together like on stage, so kind of by the end of the, of this show, so the rest of our lives, and you were selected as one of the best, like dance from Guardian last year, mm -hmm. so one of the the best from ten dance show they selected. So it's it's just really really good. So that's also the other show, which is like saying, yeah, Joe Phone is a mixed race Eastern South Asian like artist dancer, and then she has experienced a lot of like thing as a mixed race like a person artist like in this country but then when she's at 50s what she feel and what she want to bring people together so like bring people together and then to find there's no border it's stateless that's kind of like a very important thing of the festival yeah. that's so true and finally I always like to end the conversation with this which is what is the one advice you would give to a young Asian creative I think like um I think one sentence is difficult, but I would say, I would think about the concept. I think like, uh, be bold and be honest. Just like, I, I think if you if you are honest to yourself, like about what you really want and then be bold to express about that. I think that's really important, but also be honest about like where, what, what you really want and what you really want to say. Yeah, instead of thinking too much about what other people want to say or whatever, just just be honest to yourself and be bold to express about that to get what you want. Exactly. That, that's actually really good advice. Um, thank you so much uh, for joining me today and taking your time to chat with me. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.